Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another great episode of the Kami Dogu Podcast. I am Christopher Veljanovsky, and joining me is a man that is illegal in 12 US states, Toasty. <laughs> Toasty! Thank you so much for joining us today. We have some incredible episodes planned for the future, so please ensure that you've hit follow or subscribe wherever you watch or listen to the podcast. Even though Mortal Kombat is 30 this year, it's wild to think that Kamidogu itself is 17. Mm. Although we were one of the last, I guess you could say, big fan sites to establish itself, our commitment to providing one-of-a-kind guides, news, and more to the international community has always remained the same. Keep spreading the word by sharing this podcast with your friends. A lot of love goes into our show, and we've enjoyed bringing you so many great episodes. As you can imagine, organizing our incredible guests doesn't come easy. And so moving forward, I think we need to mix things up a bit. Please share with us in the comments or over on our various social media pages what you would like to see more of. Of course, the legendary interviews you know all know and love will still come your way. But with an announcement of a new game coming, there will be a lot to dissect when the time comes. Anyway, enough from me. Toasty, take it away. It's good to have you back, Kamadogu fam. Today is a day to relish. Me and Christopher are extremely blessed to be speaking with the lovely Mela Lee. Mela is very well known amongst the community to have played one of our favorite Adenians, Jade in 2019's Mortal Kombat 11. Since 2001, Mela's career in the voice acting industry has really taken off, while most notably being involved in a plethora of anime projects. She is also very recognizable with gamers as she played the character Lifeline in Apex Legends. Being the diehard Mortal Kombat fans we are, today is an exciting day to really dive behind the scenes with Jade's character. We're grateful to have Mela with us, and we will now proceed to today's interview. All right, everybody, and here we are, accompanied by Mela Lee. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. To start off our interview, tell our audiences if you were originally a Mortal Kombat fan and how you initially received the role of Jade for MK11. Um, I think we're all Mortal Kombat fans just because it's like an OG. Um, (laughs) But I received an audition for Guard A uh, for a Warner Brothers game. Everything's top secret when you audition. And I'd always Mm. wanted to be in a Warner Brothers game. I thought this is my chance. I will will, show them how good of a guard I can be. And I think, I don't know, (laughs) the lines were very simple. Like, you shall not pass. And, you know, so I, I just, I... I was guard A, and a couple of weeks later, I got a call from my agent that I, I booked guard A, and um, they sent over a bunch of NDAs, and I thought, ooh, I'm guard A in a really big game. You know, I didn't <laughs> care. I mean, I'm probably an NPC or something, but at least I'm going to get my start. And then they sent over the script, and in big letters, like a watermark, it said Jade, J-A-D-E, and I thought, <laughs> code name Jade, like, because it's still a code name. So I thought that was the code name for the game. And I begin reading this script, which was you know, 300 and something pages. Like a movie script is usually about 110. And so this is all the different mm-hmm. endings of what we now know as MK. But I'm reading it and, it and there's a scene I'm looking for for my character and there's no guard A. And I mean, I'm like looking. But as I'm looking, I'm thinking, this is, this is Mortal Kombat. And I'm going to be a guard in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> And I I get to the very end of the script and guard A has zero lines. And I call my agent. He's like, "Um, you're Jade. I was like, Jade in Mortal Kombat? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it was just, I mean, it's overwhelming and beautiful and strange and magic and like a dream come true. I mean, like jade jade there's not like a a jade other and then she he's like well and jade revenant and i was like so like a memory of jade he goes no you're you're all of the jades it's all of (laughs) you (laughs) but it was pretty dreamy pretty dreamy (laughs) no doubt wow um so when you 
worked out that you were Jade in Mortal Kombat 11. Um, did you get any kind of uh, direction in terms of how you should portray her? Um, or did you introduce a bit of your own flavor to the role? I, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, they, they cast me from the interview, right? Or the audition. But it's very much gaming now and even then. It's very much a collaborative situation. You've got uh, initial drawings. They tell you about the vision that they've had, what, what they'd like to to do for her now. And, and I loved that you guys haven't even seen all of them, but there were these renderings of Jade. And I love that she was this goddess and this gorgeous armor and she meant business. And I love that, wow. that ascension of Jade from being just beautiful. And I'm not mad at our beautiful girls, uh, but she was fierce and mm. possessed. And to have that story with her, she and Kotal, even when she says, why did you never marry? <laughs> None of them were you. And I and I knew it was Phil Lamar at that time. And I mean, just dream come true, check, check, you know, getting to yeah. be in a, a game with Phil Lamar, who's a, a force, an absolute force. And so it was really fun, you know, and, and you have wonderful direction. Um, Dominic from another realm was guiding me through and, and the team at Warner Brothers is so wonderful and I do miss their craft service. They make really great cookies and brownies. <laughs> so we're all excited that we get to go back into the studio soon. Um, but it was, it was wonderful. And, and I think what was empowering, I was recovering from a car accident at the time. And um, I'm very much into, you know, neuroplasticity and brain science. And, you know, when I would be in physical therapy, if I couldn't finish a rep, they'd say you have to finish it in your brain. Like you have to imagine you can still lift up your leg and, um, because mm -hmm. your brain will be remapping those, you know, synapses and processes. And so here I was, you know, sometimes working with a cane because I was not strong enough on my left side, but I was watching myself be this fierce goddess and just, you know, movement. And, and I think it was very much a part of me reimagining not just a healthy Mela, but a very fierce, strong next level Mela. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So when you were in the booth recording for Mortal Kombat 11 story mode, uh, did you like literally get to watch the scenes uh, that your voice would be inserted into or was just a lot of it left up to your imagination? It's almost all imagination. And um, we do have ADR after the fact when they will um, animate it and you come back in and uh, sometimes they'll add some lines if it wasn't clear or they'll rewrite something. But everything is mm. your imagination. You and the director um, and the team, they describe it. You get to see some, some illustrations. And then you take a deep breath and you get to be seven all over again. And the entire universe gets created in your mind. Nice. Um, so before you record, uh, how important is it to warm up your voice? And what techniques do you personally use? I think it's very important uh, to warm up your voice, just like as if you were a dancer. I mean, it's a muscle. But when you are working every day, what's interesting is you start to not warm up less, but you're always using your voice. So just really uh, being mindful of how it feels. It's your instrument. And knowing that, that some days, if it's a little bit rusty or you know cold, you need to have some tea or stretch out. It's your whole body too, especially with games. You can feel it, I think, in our expression in games now, whether we do the mocap or not, that it's a full body experience. And so, you know, like for Lifeline, I would be moving. And for Jade, she has this very strong stance. And, and you'd be, I'd be out of breath at the end of it because you can't, you can't fight and have that type of guttural, deep in your diaphragm um, expression unless you're fully connected to your body. So yes, warming up your voice, but even more important, warming up your body with yoga or, or Pilates or, mm -hmm. or some type of, of connection exercise that really energizes your body, keeps you in flow. In, in your eyes, what do you feel are some of the best things about Jade that makes her stand out amongst uh, the others? What drew you to her character the most, do you feel? Uh, being cast as her. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's my favorite. Um, you know, being, you know, Pacific Islander and Ethiopian and Creole, I, I, I was drawn to Jade because she, you know, although she's from another world, obviously, um, I loved the 
in the drawings to see the reflection of my own heritage. You know, she's got that Indo-Asian, you know, Pacific Islander, African kind of vibe, and and they really heightened that in in this this latest incarnation. And mm-hmm. she was elegant and um, and intelligent and strong, and not just. I mean, she, she wins the universe in a couple of them. You know what I mean? She wins. Um, I think she's a ruler. And I, I love to, to see the reflection of of her strength as well as her grace. Very well said. Nice. Um, so Jade appears pretty extensively throughout the uh, Mortal Kombat 11 story mode. Um, so in addition to that and all of the various pre-match uh, banter, how long did it take for you to complete all of your recordings? Um... I'd say almost two years. Mm. I mean, we probably 18 months before it actually came out. Uh, and then we had new DLC that, that, you know, came out throughout the next year following, which was kind of exciting to see that, you know, we would all of the different WB properties, they sort of snuck in there. So it was fun to come in. Of course, we don't see the script until right before we come in. So again, you're back to your seven, eight year old self going, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know specifically who you're speaking to with regards to that banter or is it just left up to your imagination again with regards, say, to the DLC? They definitely tell you. They tell you and they'll read you in and Mm. and it's uh, it's such good writing that, I mean, even if they're not reading you in, you can see the kind of the quips and humor and. You know, when she was working with Johnny, <laughs> just like not. I love how he's <laughs> got that swagger and she's like, no. <laughs> so there's a lot of laughter and just, I, it was nice in the DLC content because you've already got the job and, and the game has been released and, and the nerves sort of go away and you're just happy to be there, be a part of something so, so extraordinary. It's a legacy. Mm-hmm. So as you've mentioned earlier, um, you're friends with Phil Lamar. Uh, you really respect his work. Do you have a favorite moment or what would you say is your favorite line with him throughout the MK11 story? None of them are you. Yeah, that scene is so beautiful. Um, and I, I think it's not just that there is that attraction, but I love that there was a depth that timing is everything. You know, you can have somebody who loves you very much, but not very well. Um, and you can have someone that is is a flame, you know, like a twin flame, but isn't meant to be. There was no practicality in a relationship, but there was a deepest affection and fondness. Yeah. Um, so this next question may sound a little strange, uh, but <laughs> from your regular speaking voice, I feel like it carries some royal undertones, which might be why you suit Jade so well. So. Aside from that, do you share any qualities with the Adenian warrior? Um, even though I'm healing, I'd have to acknowledge myself physically as a very strong woman. Um, and, and a sense of, of legacy, definitely, with my family. I have um, strong li- lineage on both sides of my family. And, and as I'm growing up, I feel the weight of that. I feel the weight of who I need to be in the world and how I can give back. And and I see that in her, in her desire to right the world. And I've, I've always been a, a, a bit of a lifeline or someone who loves disaster relief or causes and, and don't feel, I don't feel settled unless I understand how I can make the world a better place. And, and I, I think, I think I see that in several of my characters. There is a definitely a through line, and 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 an and an imperfection in, in the process as well. Hmm. So after the release of Mortal Kombat 11, did you find yourself playing the game uh, often enough at all? Uh, whenever <laughs> you do, do you always pick Jade or do you pick other combatants as well? Um, uh, at the time, is really close with Erica Lindbeck, and obviously Cassie's like her quips are the best. But I'm a button masher. I'm the worst. <laughs> I don't. I'm a button masher. Um, I I don't spend enough time playing um, to be really actually good at any thing yet. I'm, I'm very much more story driven. You know, <laughs> did you want to enter or not? And I'm like X. You know, I mean, I, I can do that. <laughs> But when it comes to like full combos, um, the first time and last time I probably played was with Erica Ishii on her show um, 
for uh, Geek and Sundry. And, ah, yes. and <laughs> I mean, I play every now and then, but I'm the worst. I, I'm not uh, that. To put it mildly, there was a three-year-old and um, Jeremy was like, I'm really pleased, please, please, please play. And I was like, okay, I'm not very good. And about three minutes in, he said, <clears throat> maybe this isn't your gift, Miss Mella. <laughs> 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 and oh. I was like, he finished out my turn for me. <laughs> and that, you know, I mean, the wisdom of a child, the wisdom of a child. Um, so if you're up for it, would you be open to reciting your favorite Jane, Jade line? Uh, or perhaps say something funny like, Jade is currently on the Kami Dogu podcast. Ooh, <laughs> and it's Kami Dogu? Kami Dogu. Do Dogu. Yes. Kami Dogu. <laughs> yeah. um, everyone's laughing. They're like, ha, huh, Mela. Um, <laughs> Kami Dogu. Jade is currently on the Kami Dogu podcast. Fantastic. Beautiful. Oh, Love okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, see you in combat. <laughs> now, I understand you were actually... You're actually good friends uh, with some people who are in the MMA industry. And uh, around the time that you were recording for MK11, uh, I think they ultimately really helped you get into the spirit of Jade uh, during a lot of her action scenes. Uh, could you elaborate more on that subject that are for mm. our audiences? Um, well, uh, Boss Rutten uh, was pretty instrumental in, in inspiring me to overcome my injuries. And MMA folks, I mean... Boy, if you want to talk about overcoming impossible injuries and 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 the warriors like the gladiators of our day, um, Majid Rais and Basrutin, wonderful MMA coaches and human beings, um, mm -hmm. were very inspirational uh, in their recoveries from injuries and and just being in a gym <laughs> with MMA uh, fighters. There's such a, a camaraderie and and a redefining of possible. It helped me to believe beyond what was expected of me after my accident. And um, wow. they're such gentle giants. And I'm just, I'm very, very grateful. Wow. So given the opportunity, would you be interested in reprising your role as Jade in a future installment? 1000%. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Nether realm, take me back. <laughs> I don't want to leave. <laughs> Now, Mela, you're also a very talented singer. Uh, I've seen some of your stuff. It's magnificent uh, for a, a band called Magnolia Memoir. Mm -hmm. uh, I went and checked out the music video for Odds and Ends. Uh, <laughs> I was incredibly impressed. Tell the fans more about this project and if you plan on releasing some new material anytime soon. Um, Magnolia, <clears throat> sorry guys, Magnolia Memoir, um, it started when I was on a trip and I was in Mississippi doing some disaster relief and there was a journal on the side of the road uh, not just sitting on the side of it, it was at a truck stop, but it had magnolias. And I didn't know at the time that that was the state flower of Mississippi. Um, but I began just writing, sketching out music and these stories that were kind of coming to me in my dreams and, you know, um, melodies. It's, it's such a, a haunted, beautiful place, in Louisiana and Mississippi. Um, and so I thought before I went to law school, I would just record, um, some songs and Alexander Burke, uh, who was the music director, pulled in some of his his friends. One of them was Aaron Forbes, who's now music director for Billie Eilish, not doing too badly. Um, and we all got together <laughs> and um, we did this kind of live recorded album that became Magnolia Memoir's first album. Um, Alexander or Alex Burke, um, he was the youngest music director ever for Second City Chicago. And so he had a lot of connections with Jordan Peele, Keegan Michael Key, Will Forte, like all these you know, folks from SNL. And, and I ended up writing with him for some of Broadway video, um, some of their sketches for SNL. And so right. there was a connection there. And so when you see odds and ends, um, yeah. it was wonderful because they, <laughs> we were sort of an underground band because Alex and I would write a lot of music for free as these people were coming up. Uh, I don't think Jordan Peele needs our help anymore, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we would make music and so when we wanted to do our video made some phone calls and and um ben lee uh who is a lovely friend of ours ioni sky his wife um had come in jorge garcia will forte and so you see 
um, some really great folks in there. We were just so supported and it was just, just, it was and it is still just a lot of fun to create music for an industry that's been so welcoming. And um, I do have a solo, you know, project coming out in 2023 with a new single. Oh. Um, my friend mm. uh, Keith Harris, who's the drummer and one of the producers for the Black Eyed Peas, just uh, oh, wow. together a lovely uh, single that's coming out October 14th with a video by Eddie Apollo, who is an incredible animated an animation artist and painter out of London. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to you guys seeing it. Sweet. Absolutely. Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. Um, so outside of Mortal Kombat 11, you've provided your talent to other games, animation, commercials, mm -hmm. and more. Uh, while I'm sure you enjoy them all for all different reasons, do you happen to have a favorite amongst them? Mm. Um, for games, uh, I mean, for, for obvious reasons, Jade is up there. Um, I, you know, I I love being able to share that you know, with my family. Um, Lifeline reminds me so much of my grandmother. She's she's half me, half Nana, um, but there's a lot of me in there, and, and I appreciated seeing a mixed culture girl, um, you know, in a game, and and over and beyond that, just the experience of being part of a cast like Apex Legends. Um, mm. I think everyone loves each other in the industry, but this cast came together outside of the game in a way that. I'm aware of, we are all aware of, is very unusual. We're kind of like the friends cast of the gaming industry. We get into <laughs> trouble in and, <laughs> in and out of the studio. Um, and uh, for nerdy reasons, I was in Star Wars Squadrons. Not, not That's not why I was in it. <laughs> Mel is such a nerd. But I mean, to be in a Star Wars franchise, I was so nervous just going into the booth and so excited to you know, be a part of that in a two-year period, I was part of the Marvel Universe for Black Panther's quest for Marvel Avengers, um, and then Star Wars Squadrons and Mortal Kombat yeah. and and Lifeline Apex Legends. It was just like, pinch me. Pinch me. No <laughs> kidding. I'm dreaming. Living the dream. <laughs> yeah. So what advice would you have for somebody who was looking to delve into the world of voiceover work? Um... First of all, it is acting, you know, um, but so it's some of the things I think that makes someone a really great actor or storyteller is understanding who you are in the world and what you love. Um, when I'm teaching authentic voice resonance for, for my workshops, which I do free workshops um, almost every month. So you can follow me on Instagram at the Lee and uh, or go to melalee.com and sign up for updates. But being authentic in who you are and what you love. Like you may be a scientist, you love quantum physics, mechanics, uh, hiking, baking, you know, any of those things, that's who your characters love. And I think some people will come to me and say, I'd love to be in voice acting. I can do these voices and they imitate someone else. And I always say, you can't cash the check without your signature. Mm -hmm. And you have to trust that the exquisite math of you Nobody on the planet has the math of your upbringing, your heartbreaks, your loves, the things that light your heart up. So put that into your character, whether it's a villain or a hero or a side character guard A, because it could end up being the lead. Um, <laughs> the characters you play love the things you love, hate the things you hate. It's a shorthand to an instant, intricate math that's going to be enticing and evocative and, and will connect people to your work. Um, number two, there's now we're in a world where you have so much free information on the internet. Um, mm. Search things out. You can go on TikTok. You can go on YouTube. When I was starting out, there wasn't any of that. And um, I just failed forward. <laughs> but right now, um, there are millions of voice acting and voiceover jobs, whether it's e-learning or, or you know technical scripts or games or animation or commercials. So find out what really lights you up. It's a it's a wonderful industry and maybe 10 years ago, hard to get into. Now, if you want to do this, there is work for you and really explore all of the avenues and find out what you want to do most. Well said. Lovely. Um, so uh, we've mentioned, you mentioned it before, but uh, you had a pretty traumatic experience uh, back in 2014, uh, being involved in quite a horrific uh, car accident. Um, and we heard that you had almost an out of, 
out of body experience uh, went through a lot after the ordeal would you be willing to um, go a little bit more in depth about it and how the you know what the recovery process was like yes um sorry it's just instantly like I'm there um I think it takes a minute to really um, understand how how difficult something is when you're in the middle of it because you're surviving you have to yeah. be unbelievably positive and yeah. um, the benefit for me was that I didn't have time anymore. I used to spend hours a day wishing I was taller, smaller, smarter, prettier, you know, all of those things I wasn't. You are completely present when you are recovering from catastrophic grief or injury or illness. You you have to you can't take things one day at a time. You have to take it one breath at a time. And it meant that I stopped being so horrible to myself. And I think we I think we all have been guilty of 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 unequal measure. Like the fruit of comparison is bitter. And so sometimes, especially in social media in this day and age, we'll, we'll think I'm not as tall as everyone else. I'm not as smart. I'm not as, but none of those things matter. What are you? What if we spent time really focusing on what we are, what we love? And, and part of that's growing up. We, we spend a good portion of our lives trying to be someone else's dream. And there's a moment in our 20s, 30s, or maybe beyond where you, you realize sure. that this is your life. What, what do you like? And stop trying to erase yourself in relationships or jobs or, or you know, work as an artist. And overcoming that accident. I mean, I, I remember I was like, I put my pants on by myself. Woo! I was so oh. excited. And I felt like I was a four-year-old kid because I, I was so nice to myself. I'd be like, I did it. Everything I celebrated, being able to push a shopping cart. Um, of course. I remember being, you know in the in the market and getting my own trolley and not thinking though how do I carry this home so I was putting stuff in it and I was getting a little tired and then they they packaged it up and then you get to lean on the kindness of the of the world because people then made sure that neighbors would you know bring groceries in and I think I'd I'd seen the world maybe as a more dangerous place growing up and I got to see the good in people as I recovered and they supported me and cheered me on and it it changed my work as well um, I started doing much more animation, funny stuff. I, you know, oh, yeah. I just didn't take myself so seriously. And I, I got to celebrate who I actually was. And I think it's not, it's not a coincidence that, you know, as I got better, come 2016, 2017 was Marvel Avengers. You know, 2018 got cast in Apex and Mortal Kombat. 2019 was Star Wars. And I mean... So I think there, there's something to be said about that. And I also um, had a moment where I wasn't here anymore in the accident. Um, someone was texting and they ran a red light. And I remember spinning and you don't know at the time that you've lost consciousness. You're just floating in the gray. And I remember twirling for a long time in this gray wow just gray and i wasn't in pain i just had no control and finally came to a stop and was just floating and i don't know if it's seconds minutes you know you don't really understand time at that moment but there was this voice and it was very calm not alarming and it leaned in and said if you don't breathe you'll die wow and i it was no question. I was like, oh, I have some place to be. I have a great life. And I took a deep breath. And when I came to, I felt the most unimaginable pain I'd ever felt in my life. And there was mm. a firefighter named Mike. He was there and, and he, you know, they do this every day, but he must have known what was going through my mind. He looked at me and he says, you know, you're okay. Look at me. And they were cutting me out of the car. And, and, uh, he, you know, he said, your lungs aren't punctured, you know, just look at me and, and you know, take a deep breath and, and you're going to be all right. And, you know, I've always loved my first responders, but I now have a lifelong gratitude for the people like that that are there with you. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Absolutely. Oh, Mama. So grateful. <laughs> so grateful. And um, 
I just, life became very different after that. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, what's it all for? Why would I come back for a life where I was stressed or I didn't like myself? And yeah, and it's just, I'm so grateful every day that I got a second chance. Wow. Thank, Thank you, you so much that. for sharing that. Sorry. Yeah. That hit me Thank deep. You. No, don't be sorry. Wow. <laughs> what a dream life. Thank you guys for being a part of it. Yeah. Absolutely. And it means a lot that you are willing to open up like that. Yes. Um, not just Mortal Kombat fans, but just as human beings that, you know, it pulls at my heartstrings and everyone has their own pain that they go through in one way or another. But, you know, it's it's the healing that matters, not the pain itself. Yes. And I yeah, think we're all united by that. I and mean, there's not a human being on the planet, rich or poor, black, white, everyone in between that hasn't experienced being a human being, being Absolutely. lost and, and hopefully being found. And that's part of the magic, I think, of the gaming community how many of these stories we now get to connect with people all over the world. And, and, you know, it used to be, we'd share stories in a cave. Now the cave is the planet earth and we get to share that narrative together. And I think it's had a profound effect on. Absolutely. Definitely. So Mala, we're going to try to lighten things up here. Now we're yes. going to head to the last <laughs> segment of the show <laughs> and it okay. is called final round and so what we're going to do for this final round is we're going to ask you some quick questions try to get to know you a little more okay. so the first one being Mella. <laughs> you got some dolls to cry <laughs> <laughs> you're like man this girl um, but oh, you know man. what i just gotta say i'm i'm it's not an ugly cry i'm kind of cute when i'm emotional i think so i'll Noted. agree with that <laughs> yes <laughs> Noted. <laughs> okay. What is your number one favorite food? Oh, oh, that's so hard. Um, <laughs> um, oh gosh. I mean, there's so many good ones. There right? are. I I love I, I love a good chocolate tort. Um, ah. I, Tim Tams are up there. Sorry. <laughs> 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 um uh please bring back the honeycomb tim tam um honeycomb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> um i love gosh i mean i love fresh fruits and vegetables and i know that sounds oh. silly but when you go to different parts of the world whatever the the fruits are like you know feijo is in new zealand and you know i love to taste mm. fruits from different parts of the world it's just kind of it's really part of the earth like you know, some people collect spoons or like t-shirts. I, I want to <laughs> sure. know what the fruit is um, from different parts of the world. I, I think that's, and it's, I don't know, it feels really wealthy. Like this beautiful thing you can share food, like disaster relief. We get to do that a lot wherever we used to go. And, and, and people will communicate their culture with you through food. And mm. I feel like you can just really connect to where you are through, um, you know, the folk food and, 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 understanding what comes from the earth there yes yes well said what are some of your secret talents <laughs> <laughs> um procrastination i don't know if that's a secret <laughs> <laughs> that oh man i love that answer i love it <laughs> um, um i so um i'm i don't think it's a secret mm. anymore because they've put they've put my actual cookie recipe in apex legends um i what? love to bake Really? I love to bake. Yeah. Um, so oh. Lifeline's cookie recipe is mine. <laughs> and um, wow. I baked cookies when I, I first got cast in there. I, everybody <laughs> was working 24-7 before because it was such an overnight success, Apex Legends. And I just mm. baked a bunch of cookies and went to the dev team. And um, I got to meet Vince Sampella. And I cried like a kid. I, I, I was just going <laughs> to drop these cookies off. And he was like, Mella. And I turned around. And I now understand why fans sometimes get emotional. Because I just turned around and it was Vince. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I've got cookies. And so he, he had somebody come grab the cookies and they went upstairs. And then he texted me. And I'm like, he just texted me. And he says, Mela, I didn't get any of your cookies. They're gone. And I hadn't really thought about it because I made a couple dozen, but there's 87 people and they, they were hungry. And so he said, would you mind coming back and making some for everyone? And I could give you a tour of, uh, you know, respawn. And I was like, yeah. 
Yes. And so <laughs> I did that. And then my castmates were like, how did you get to go to Respawn? So the next time we went, everybody baked something from their culture. <laughs> and we had like this, wow. this potluck. And then we can like in 2019, right before um, the, in the before times, um, <laughs> they said, listen, we've made this poster. Um, would you mind signing it? Cause there's going to be like eight or nine of us there. And I said, only if we can get a poster signed by the dev team and, you know, the writers. And so my most prized possession, aside from my scorpion, you know, from the VIP Mortal Kombat <laughs> uh, <laughs> release, is this beautiful poster that's signed by the writers, the dev team, Vince, um, of Whoa. the OG Apex Legends folks. Whoa. Look at that. And he's like, what's your hidden talent? Procrastination, bragging. I don't know. They're <laughs> 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 like writing it down. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Brilliant. What is the funniest or most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> um, in the studio or just in life? Um, anything. It doesn't matter. It's funny. The first thing that came to mind was the crush I had on a boy named Lee in school. And I was new okay. in the school. I'm, I was a very fast runner at the time. But my huh? my mother was very, she's like born in England, very like, you have to wear dresses. Everyone was wearing shorts and, and pants, but I had to wear skirts. Um, but I, I ran and I didn't know at the time that if you want to impress, a, you know, someone that you like, you probably shouldn't beat them at everything. So... <laughs> 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 Lee was, I was a really tall girl. I was this tall when I was 10. So I, I thought he'd be impressed with my running. Uh, that didn't work. But then we had a long jump and I was in a skirt. And a few days before my mother had got me some skivvies, like little unmentionables. And they were like on sale, but they were like green goldfish and like really hideous designs. And she's like, <laughs> you're eight. Who's going to see your skivvies, right? So I do this long jump and I... And I, I land and it was a really great jump, but I can't see anything for a minute. And I realized my skirt is over my eyes. <laughs> oh, and I'm putting the skirt up and like, it's like in the movies where the kids are like, you know, slow motion <laughs> pointing and laughing. And I, <laughs> oh, man. I, I got a ribbon, but I can say <laughs> that day. In my brain, I was like, Lee is gonna fall in love with me. He's gonna be like, that girl's so fast. She can jump. Um, I was a little bit of a tomboy, even though I had to wear dresses. And uh, I went home completely defeated. <laughs> oh. And now I, I'm just gonna put it out there. My unmentionables, I'm like, you know, I remember in my accident, because I, I thought, you never know who's gonna see him. <laughs> and I made sure I always had my lingerie is like on point. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is Seven, it, yeah, eight-year-old Bella what's a, taught me what's lessons. What's a skivvy in North America? Oh, um, skivvies. I'm sorry. Uh, I prob that's probably the wrong word. Um, un under uh, underwear. Oh, really? Because um, in Australia, a skivvy is a turtleneck. That's what they call oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, where is this my story going? Me skivvies. <laughs> no, okay. So uh, panties. <laughs> Panties. Panties, okay. Um, but we were at the store, and I don't know, they were like six for $10, and they were hideous. But she was like, who's going to see your panties? You're a child. I was, I was like, what's so embarrassing about a turtleneck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were green with with goldfish on them, but like, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle green. And they okay. went way up, like past my waist, because they were a little big, because they weren't really meant for children. <laughs> <laughs> so they're to the like uh yeah i don't know why everybody this is an exclusive only heard on this podcast mela's never told that story before but it was funny the instant you know because i'm such a tomboy now and i i thought about it because green jade i was like well you know lee if you're out there uh i did turn out pretty damn cool <laughs> <laughs> mela if you could travel back in time what era would you go to and why well, since time is a construct and everything is an is, I'd actually probably go to the future, which is a now. Um, mm. uh, you know, being a person of, of multiple cultures, uh, I, I don't think I would go back and just land and hope for the best. Um, but I would like to, I'd like to, if there was a time I would travel to, I would like to travel to me at 120. 
and and be able to just see across the years the different people and things that turned out so interesting. I call them love letters from the universe. We all have them where mm. you go, oh my gosh, 10 years ago when that person met this person and I got this job, that led to me being on a podcast with Christopher and Toasty, right? <laughs> yeah. And for, you know, I don't want to give away all the, the secrets to my life, but I, I think it'd be cool to sit at Mela at 120 and be like, just look at the beautiful math of my life and how it it all turned out pretty, pretty wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, do you have any nicknames? Mm. <laughs> Pop Tart <laughs> was one of them. Pop Tart. <laughs> um, when I was yeah, when I was uh, in junior high, I used to love Pop Tarts. So Pop Tart. Um, and you know, I guess no. I mean, Lifeline is uh, you know, I get called yeah. Lifeline a lot, even before I was a Lifeline. So it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, how art imitates life imitates art. <laughs> um, my Nana calls me sunshine and also late freight because sometimes I'm, I arrive whenever <laughs> I feel like it. <laughs> uh, what was that you said earlier? Something about procrastination? Yeah. Something? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been found out. You guys have the inside scoop. I'm trying to be a better human. I am. I just, I do. I mean, honestly, it's like, it comes from anxiety. I do deal with anxiety, but um, it's been really kind of interesting. When I first started doing comic cons or appearances, I would just be sick to my stomach, like absolutely petrified until sure. I started understanding that all the people at that table we used to eat at lunch, you know, those of us that were the outliers, the outsiders, we took over the planet. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm just meeting me from another universe every time someone comes up to say hello. And, and, and the world has become such a warm, inviting, incredible, connected place for me through gaming and, and animation and, and being able to meet you guys at comic cons and, and, and podcasts. We get to talk. It's like the ultimate pen pal experience. <laughs> sure. Um, if you had to think back, what is your favorite childhood memory? Mm. I had a teacher named Dean who um, had a guitar and um, mm. would just sing. Uh, I, I sometimes was, I don't know how to say this in a proper way. I was sometimes... Uh, left at school for a long periods of time before I got picked up. And I, he was always really calm, like it was no big deal. And he says, well, would you mind, um, you know, sitting with me while I while I play some of my favorite songs? Mm. And, you know, he would play, I'm being followed by a moon shadow and leaving on a jet plane, which is not your like typical five-year-old would listen to those, but all of these like 60s, 70s, you know, kind of songs. Okay. Um, and I think it sparked my, my connection to music where it was so calming you know, to be singing. I'm always singing. I'm probably going to do more on social media as well. Like every morning there's a song in my heart and I love the seventies and eighties music. And, um, but I think just like he had this like crazy curly dark hair and like, a. I didn't know my father when I was growing up. So I think Dean was probably the father I always wished for and the friend I always needed. And there was a way when he would hug you that you would feel the vibration of his voice. It's going to be okay. Right? That's incredible. And teachers, you know, I hope they end up being millionaires. Like we should be paying them all like a million dollars a year. And <laughs> um, teachers really fill the, you know, the gap between who, who, where, what, what our actual lives are and, and, and what we really need. And sometimes it's a hug, but also sometimes it's vision. And I think mm-hmm. Dean was definitely that for me as a little girl. Very nice. interesting. Wow. Um, what is your biggest fear? Mm. That I missed saying a kind word to someone that really needed it. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. I want to, you know, I, I'm learning not to procrastinate because if I'm in a hurry, um, it means I'm not having time sometimes, like that calm space that you can remember to call someone or, or sit and listen. They really need it. That's what's really kind of, 
impressed upon me in the last couple of years is that I need to be more organized with my time and overcome my anxiety because in a calm space, I'm, I'm a much better friend. And finally, if you were stuck on a deserted island off the mm-hmm. coast of Australia, let's say, um, which three <laughs> items would you take with you? Wait, does it have to be off the coast of Australia? Because you guys have some pretty gnarly stuff. <laughs> Actually, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, could it be like New Zealand and the people are missing, but it's like nothing yeah. can kill you? <laughs> okay, let's pretend you're on the TV show Lost, Lost. and ignore all the strange stuff that, that went okay. on. But if you were yes. just in the middle of a calm ocean and there's no one mm-hmm. around, uh, what, what mm-hmm. three items would you take with you? Ooh. Hmm. This is going to sound strange because uh, I'm like thinking way ahead. Like I'm imagining I'm being there forever. Two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so they wouldn't be alone, but like animals are the best. I mean, I'm assuming there's probably animals there, but I love dogs. Um, and I mean, can I pick, can, can the two dogs be like one thing? Because yeah. yes. the practical yeah, me is yeah. like water filtration system, two dogs, a journal. <laughs> <laughs> the, dis- the disaster relief person in me is a like, okay. Machine. <laughs> hey, look, food, water, and companionship. Those are the three things that, you know, you, if you have that, you can survive anything. And if you don't survive, you're going to die happy. You know, and if I'm on this island and it's a calm ocean, well, I sure like to enjoy it, you know, and just... I think that's what we all were on was a deserted island in 2020. And Mm. we had to figure out how to be okay with that. Very true. Absolutely. Yeah. And look at us now. (laughs) Yeah. That's it. (laughs) Not lost anymore. Well, even in my area in uh, 2020, we were were locked down. We weren't allowed to go anywhere or see family or anything for over 100 days. And so that wow. was really difficult to get through. And I've got a infant son or toddler mm. now, but at the time he was six months old. And you can imagine there's only so much you can do at home. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, it was a terrible experience. So I think we've all been on our own deserted islands for sure. I'm so sorry that you went through that, but I, it is my sincerest hope, you know, whether it's online or through social media or in person that, you know, for the rest of our lives, because, you know, we we remember the before times um, that we savor the moments of connection, the words that we share and the time that we get to spend and not take it for granted. I'm so grateful for just hanging out in my kitchen, talking to you gents. Absolutely. I mean, we're (laughs) like living in, we're dripping with diamonds for friends, gentlemen. That's That's it. Lovely. That's it. Well, Mel, this has really been something special. Uh, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time today. But before we go, is there any project that you'd like to promote at this point in time? uh, And which social media platforms can our listeners find you at? Ooh, um, please do me the honor of staying connected um, on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok at The Melalee. So T-H-E-M-E-L-A-L-E-E. Melalee.com. You can sign up for the newsletter so I can keep in touch with you. And uh, we do free workshops every month and... New singles, new music, new new everything. So very excited. Awesome. And um, I don't know, when is this going to air? I mean, do, do we know? We'd have to check the schedule, I think. Hello, yeah. everybody, in the, <laughs> hello everybody in the future. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm actually, as we're recording this, peeps, um, I'm packing tomorrow morning so that I can head over to Sydney and Brisbane for Oz Comic Con. Um, and uh, I would love for anyone to hit up supernova anybody else because i want to come back to oz as soon as possible i miss you guys (laughs) and we want you here don't worry (laughs) (laughs) um well christopher i mean we talked about it uh when we we weren't recording but uh i will be reaching out to you when i get there we're gonna see if we can make some content i gotta upgrade my my computer and we might be doing some some fun (laughs) shopping day off (laughs) solid (laughs) thanks gents we might see look at this. this is a perfect example of friends all over the world Absolutely. And that's, that's one thing I've always said is um, living in Australia, you often feel isolated because everything's so North American centric when it comes to things like Mortal Kombat. And Mm. so, you know, despite the fact that it's, you know, seven or eight 30 in the morning now, uh, for me, it's, it's my opportunity to 
not only, you know, record great content and share with the world, but as a fan myself, it's it's my chance to, you know, I can't go to the billions of cons that are on in America, but I can mm-hmm. sit here with you and, and have the time of my life. So thank you so much for joining us. I loved every minute of it. And I look forward <laughs> to reaching out when I land. And Absolutely. gentlemen, Toasty Christopher and those of you listening, friends for life. You know, yeah, reach sure. out and um, let's be a part of each other's success stories. Absolutely. All right, Mello. Well, you have an awesome day. And uh, me and Christopher are very excited to speak with you again shortly. Absolutely. <laughs> For sure. And now we've come to the final point of this episode. We appreciate each and every single one of you that keeps this channel going. To all our new listeners... We deeply hope you enjoyed this thoroughly, and we'd be thrilled if you could pass on the word to all of your friends. It's been a long journey for me and Chris, and we would love to keep this going for even longer. Let us know in the comments what you thought of this episode, and until next time, have fun, stay safe, and stay flawless.